All right, guys, Mr. B here. In this video, we're gonna be going over the practice problems in the chapter 2.3 notes on elements and compounds. So here we go. Number one, a substance is either a blank or a blank. All right, so if we're talking about substances, remember that substances can either be elements, so an element or a compound. This is directly from the notes. Um, number two, true or false, an element is the simplest form of matter that has a unique set of properties that is true. Okay, remember that uh, an element is the simplest thing you can get that still has properties. And uh, if you go any smaller than an element, you start getting into the subatomic, like protons and neutrons and electrons. And those things no longer have a unique set of properties anymore. So... All right, number three, compounds can be broken down into simpler substances by blank means. So remember that compounds can be broken down into simpler substances, but they have to be broken down by chemical means, okay, not physical means. So um, you have to actually break it apart using chemical means, and then afterwards that compound is now gone, okay? It doesn't exist anymore. You've made it into new materials. All right, number four, state whether always true, sometimes true, or never true. Heating a compound produces elements. That is sometimes true, okay, not always. Um, heat is usually a very good way of breaking down a compound, but not all compounds can be broken down using heat, so only sometimes, okay, not always. Um, number five, compounds can be broken down into elements by physical means. This is never true. Okay, compounds cannot be broken down physically. They can only be broken down chemically. So not true. All right, number six, liquid A and liquid B are clear liquids. They're placed in open containers and allowed to evaporate. When evaporation is complete, there is a white solid in container B, but no solid in container A. From these two results, what can you infer about the two liquids? All right, this is a little bit of a tricky one. So let's insert a text box here just so we can do some typing. And let's change our font size. Okay, so let's think about this. So we have two containers. Okay, so we have liquid A and liquid, oh geez, can't type, liquid B. Okay, both are colorless liquids. So colorless liquid. Um, let's see if I can move this over. There we go. Uh, like two, there, there we go. Okay, colorless liquid, and this is colorless liquid. Um, they both evaporate, okay? So after evaporation, so after, okay, so that the, the stuff before was from before, so let's just go before, before. Okay, so afterwards, um, liquid A has nothing in it, okay? So nothing left. And liquid B has a white solid. So what can we infer about these two things? All right, well, if liquid A evaporates and there's nothing left in there, evaporation is a physical process, okay? So if you're going from liquid to gas, that's a physical process, and there's nothing in the container afterwards, that means that liquid A is probably a substance because it's one material and it all evaporates into a gas. Whereas liquid B was most likely a mixture because evaporation again is a physical process. So when it evaporated, you separated out a liquid and a solid. And because it was separated physically, it has to be a mixture, okay? Because compounds and, and substances can't be separated um, by physical means, only chemical ones. So we're gonna say that Liquid A is probably, okay, I'm gonna say probably, because we don't 100% know, but probably a substance. And liquid B is probably a mixture, okay? Something like that. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, but if you have questions, let me know. Okay, number seven, a clear liquid in an open container is allowed to evaporate. Okay, similar to like the previous question. After three days, a solid is left in the container. Okay, like the previous question. Was the clear liquid an element, a compound, or a mixture? How do you know? All right, so this problem is pretty much just like the previous one, only with kind of less 
stuff in it. Um, but if we have a contain a liquid and it evaporates, um, and there's going to be a solid left over in the container after it evaporates, then that liquid is probably going to be a mixture. Okay, it's not going to be an element because if the liquid was an element and it evaporated, there wouldn't be a solid left over. Okay, because an element is only made out of one thing. There wouldn't be a liquid and a solid. It'd just be it'd be gone. Um, it's Probably not a compound either because compounds can't be separated physically and evaporation is a physical process. So pretty much just leaves mixture. Mixtures can be separated through physical means and evaporation is a physical process. So we can say that um, the clear liquid is most likely a mixture because the solid, oh, did not spell it right, because the solid and liquid were um, separated by evaporation which is a physical process and mixtures can be separated by physical means. Okay, something like that. Okay, um, looking at number eight, classify each substance as an element or a compound. Okay, so water, element or compound. Um, you probably know that water has a chemical formula of H2O. That means it's made out of hydrogen, and oxygen. And hydrogen is an element, oxygen is an element. So water, which is made out of two elements, would make it a compound. So this is a compound. Oxygen, on the other hand, we already know that oxygen it makes up water. So it's clearly smaller than water. Therefore, oxygen is an element. And it's on the periodic table of elements. So we know it's an element. Number nine, write the chemical symbol for each potassium and lead. Okay, um, so we're gonna want a um, we're gonna want a periodic table for this. All right, so here's our periodic table. I just went to Google, just typed in periodic table. Here we go. And uh, the question is asking, um, write the chemical symbol for each. So we have potassium and lead. Okay, so chemical symbol for potassium. All right, now it might take you some time to find the elements on here, but potassium is here on the left, has a symbol of K. So the symbol is going to be just capital K. As for lead, um, again, we can go take a look at our periodic table. And again, it might take you some time to look and find it, but lead is right here, PB, as a symbol of PB. So capital P, lowercase b. All right, name the chemical elements represented by the symbol. So now we're gonna be naming these. Now, some of these you might know already just from learning the elements um, in previous you know, grades, but we're gonna use our periodic table. So Cu, look on here and find it, and we find Cu right here. This is copper. So chemical symbol of Cu is copper. And H is hydrogen. So, bam, there you go. Okay, now in this chapter, we're not going to be like memorizing the uh, the element symbols or anything yet. Um, you'll learn them as we go through this course, but you know, it's okay to use your, your periodic table for this. So anyway, those are practice problems for the chapter two, section three notes. Hopefully that helped you if you had any confusion. But again, as always, if you need more help, reach out to me, email me, contact me. You know, we can chat via Google Meet or something like that or in class or in person. Um, but yeah, so Mr. B, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.